is Dina Does. I'm Dina, and I know a little bit about a lot, but I want to know more. So join me on this path to self-discovery. Hello, and welcome to this episode of Dina Does, where we'll be talking about breath work. And I know we've talked about breath work before, but I wanted to dive in even deeper. So um, today our guest is the breath work master, John Paul Crimi. Welcome. Thanks for having me, Dina. It's great to see you. So good to see you. Um, so JP, we like to call him JP around here. I think everybody calls you JP, right? Not everybody, but whatever is more comfortable, John Paul or JP is fine. Okay. As long as you don't call me Paul, which is my father's name, then I get triggered. Okay, we don't want to trigger anyone. This, <laughs> this podcast is about de-triggering. <laughs> yeah, the triggers are gone, Dina. They're gone. <laughs> yes. oh, when we wish in a perfect <laughs> world. Yeah, that's what I've learned about healing is like just when you think you mastered the trigger. Totally. And it's always the else. family. Ram, Ram Das said, if you think you're enlightened, go spend a week with your family, right? And yes. I always say your family pushes <laughs> your buttons because they installed them. They put them there. Abs- no true statement. <laughs> Absolutely true. Um, but I wanted to have you on not only because you are, like I said, the master of breath work, but I had my very first breath work class with you. And I remember laying there afterwards and thinking, I was kind of stunned. And I was like, what the fuck just happened? Because I wasn't expecting the emotions, yeah. um, all of it that happened. So the I wanted to have you on for so many reasons, but I think you will best explain the science behind breath work and why we do it. So why don't we start with that? Great. Give us a little synopsis. So first of all, that's the most common response after my class is what the fuck just happened? (laughs) Like, And then, (laughs) then people say, you know, they come up to me like that felt like 20 years of therapy without having to say a word. And I'm like, yeah, who doesn't need that? Right. But it's really unexpected because we go our whole lives breathing. And so we take it for granted. We don't realize this, that there's this source inside of us that we can tap into whenever we want, whenever we need it and breathe in this certain way that's gonna create this incredible experience for us. And that's gonna clear out our stress and our trauma and our anxiety and our grief and our depression and all these emotions that are stuck in our nervous system. All this stuff is living in our nervous system. And the breath work that I teach clears it out. And so let's talk about breath work. There's all different types of breath work. So breath work is like saying fitness, right? It's like, well, I do fitness. Well, what what do you mean? Do you do soul cycle? Do you do yoga? Like what kind of fitness do you do? CrossFit? So there's all different kinds of breath work. There's certain practices that you will do that will calm your nervous system in this beautiful way where you do two breaths in through the nose and then you exhale through the mouth and it's called cyclical breathing. And I can show you guys that today. It's this really powerful, simple technique. And let's just do it. It's two breaths in through the nose. The first breath is a long breath. The second breath is a short little inhale and then an exhale through the mouth and a longer exhale through the mouth. So it's like this. Right, so in through the nose, another one into the nose, and then. Oh, as you're holding, like hold it up top. Twice. Yeah. Well, oh. the second one kind of just is a quick little jolt, like okay. a. So it's this. Oh, that I knew a long ex- shoulders right away. <laughs> yeah. So there's a study out of Stanford Medicine that that this type of breath work, this cyclical breathing in just doing it a couple minutes a day releases all the stress in your body and it does more has bigger benefits than doing meditation it's easier and it's simpler than meditation and i'm somebody who had whose head was too loud to meditate i really struggled with meditation meditation was the big thing for 15 years but now everybody's finding out oh breath work is actually in some ways more powerful and a lot of ways more powerful science is proving that and it's easier to do right so The type of breath work that I mainly teach because I want people to have that experience that you were describing, which is what the fuck just happened? And oh my God, that felt like 20 years of therapy. I teach this breath work called circular breath work or conscious connected breathing. And it's two breaths in and one breath out, in and out through the mouth. And it's kind of an intense experience because you you don't wanna do it when you're driving. You don't wanna do it in water on a float or in the bath. You wanna be laying down, ideally in a class with someone like me or with a facilitator taking you through because you can have this big emotional release. Yeah, and so- I remember we we went to a beautiful retreat in Bali um, where you were leading with friends of ours. And 
one of the things that, and I'll be honest, breath work is so intense. Um, I have a little bit of PTSD from that specific, I don't know if you recall, but one of the girls in the class had right next to me had the sure. biggest release. Sure. And she was yelling and she was crying and she was screaming and me being the sensitive Pisces laying right next to her. I felt like I was overwhelmed, yeah. you know, but this is what it does. It well, you can get, you can be really sensitive and take on other people's energies and that can kind of freak you out. And then what happens is your mind will use that experience as a story to keep you from doing it again. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so that's one of the great benefits of my Zoom class online, because you don't have anyone around you. You're in your house, in your safe space, in your home. And so you can and some people don't want other people to hear them have a big emotional release. So you can come to my Zoom class online and turn off your camera or leave it on so I can watch you breathe and coach you. I coach people in the class and I have people that come from all over the world and different countries. And it's amazing. And they're in their room and they can hear me really clearly. And I'm going, come on, Dina, let's go. You've done harder shit in your life than laying on the floor and breathe. You can do this, right? So I'm coaching you on Zoom. And it's a little for people like you who are sensitive to other people's energy, that might be a better way to go. Yeah. And I wanted to bring that up because um, everyone is different. And I remember Dave, you know, you know, my husband, Dave, he was with us. That actually her being having such a big release encouraged him to release more. So for someone like him, who's an extrovert and doesn't mind that, that yeah. worked in his favor. So you yeah. have to really see what's best for you. That's why I love that you do online and in person so you can experience both. You're, but you're it, is, it is really unexpected what happens when you're just breathing. Um, and we touched on it with Manjeet about how most people are walking through life incorrectly breathing. So she showed us more of like, you know, the expansion of breath. Um, but I wanted to dive deeper with you um, on this specific breath work that you do. And, you know, we're talking season two, all about the nervous system sure. and how to regulate it, how to calm it. Um, so I want you to touch a little bit more specifically on the nervous system and how your technique works with it. Great. So when you breathe in through the nose, you're breathing into your parasympathetic nervous system. Parasympathetic is rest and digest, right? So that earlier technique that I just showed you, the cyclical breathing, we're breathing in through our nose and we're exhaling through the mouth. And that long exhale relaxes us and puts us in our parasympathetic nervous system. It calms us down. I'll do that sometimes on a flight, you know, if they have to, if there's a problem on a flight or something, or I'm stressed out, or before I want to say something stupid to my wife that I'm going to regret for the rest of the day, I'll go, shut up, John Paul, don't say it. it, don't say it, don't say it. Right? So, and she starts laughing because she knows what I'm doing, right? She's like, oh, is there something you want to say? You know, but so that's, parasympathetic. Now my technique, the one that I use in my classes to have this big emotional release to release all that anxiety and stress and generational trauma, right? Science has proven now that trauma is passed on through us through our DNA. So you thought you were screwed up because of your parents and you were right. It is their fault, but it's their parents <laughs> fault so and their simple. parents, right? Yeah. So, so it's like science has proven that like, cause some people are like, I don't know why I have anxiety. I don't know why I have depression. Well, science has proven that, you know, grandchildren and great grandchildren of, of survivors of the Holocaust have higher rates of cortisol and anxiety and depression, right? Mothers that were pregnant at 9-11 have the babies were born with higher rates of cortisol. It's like science has proven this. They did studies with mice and it's incredible. But so and we're gonna also, I just want to add one more thing. It could also be not something not as obvious. Maybe while your mother was um, pregnant with you, you were going, they were going through hard times in their marriage, financial stress or a grandmother and all that. So it's things that aren't as obvious too, but I just wanted to put that you, in. No, listen, I'm glad you said that. Like, mm -hmm. okay. So I, I'm not the woo woo guy. I'm from Boston. I don't believe in Mercury and retrograde. Your life's a mess. Cause you, you made it that way. Don't blame it on the fucking I might kick you off this podcast. Now. I know, <laughs> I know, but that's why we love each other. So, but here's the thing. I've had these woo woo experiences that I can't deny. So it pisses me off because so like one time I was in a, a session with a guy who, put, who did hypnotherapy and he's like, do you believe in past lives or any of that shit? And I was like, no, I don't believe in any of that. And then he did a hypno thing and I went under and it was around money for me. And I saw my mother pregnant and my father and they were arguing about money. And she, my father was like, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. And she's like, we don't have the money. We can't afford it. And this is probably something I heard growing up, but I saw this scene. And the hypnotherapist did all this stuff to me and changed it and shifted it. And he, oh, it's like all this weird stuff. And I came out of there and it was gone. 
and it yeah. it shifted. And so when you said that, I was like, yeah, that's that's it can happen right while you're in the room. Your mom's stressed out. She's worried about finances, of course. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you're spot right. on. I think you're spot on. I I don't want to be woo woo, but the experiences are undeniable, and I, it drives me nuts. So <laughs> I want right. to be in the science. I just want, I want to live in the science of it. The science based stuff. So go back to that. And okay, let's go back to the science. <laughs> so my belief, they're they're just starting to do studies on this style of breath work. There's not a lot of science out on it. But my personal belief, after over a decade of taking people through this and having my own transformation and clearing out my own traumas and watching other people clear out their traumas, is this trauma is stored in the nervous system and the sympathetic part of the nervous system, fight or flight, right? Like oh, you saw somebody get in a car accident or you saw something horrible, you got attacked. You start breathing into your nerve, your sympathetic nervous system when you get attacked or when you're in fight or flight, right? So I believe that that's where the traumas are stored. And so when you breathe with this technique that I teach, which is through the mouth in an intense way, when you're laying down into that sympathetic nervous system, we're clearing out the traumas. We're clearing out the stuff, all the stuff. Now, why doesn't that happen when you're exercising? Because you're using that oxygen as fuel for your muscles. Because sometimes you start breathing through your mouth when you're exercising, when you, you know, you're really intensely exercising. But when you lay down and you breathe this way, you're laying down, you're relaxed, and you're in a safe space, and we're doing it with an intention. I'm and- just going to say, it's intentional. Intention and- is everything. Animals have a, a mechanism by which they... You know, like if if a a rabbit gets chased and almost killed and it gets away, it shakes to release that fear that it almost just got eaten. I actually do that now, that technique. (laughs) When I get freaked out or I have a trigger or something scary, a movie or something, I'll shake my entire body just like the rabbit, just to get it out. Because I've learned how much, especially me, I'm a freezer. So Mm -hmm. for me, my technique, a lot of people, like you said, it's fight, flight, I or freeze. freeze. Yeah. Or so, freeze. I didn't say that. that. Thank you for bringing that up. Because a lot of times they'll say, you know, with the instance of a sexual assault, for instance, it, it's a horrible thing. The, why didn't you say stop? Why didn't you say anything? Well, because your body went into freeze and you couldn't yeah. say anything. You didn't know what to do. Right. And so a lot of people in sexual assault will freeze. And then that gets trapped in the nervous system. Exactly. in the sympathetic nervous system. And that's what we're clearing out when we do the style of breath work. Also, you know, people are breathing really shallow all the time in their chest and holding their breath. Why? Because the emotions are stored right down here. And when we start to breathe down there into that diaphragm, into that belly, we start to feel those emotions that we haven't wanted to feel, that we haven't wanted to deal with. So a lot of people will come to my class and literally first, second, third song, they start to have all these emotions come up. Well, because they haven't, they've been holding their breath all, all, all the time, walking around, breathing shallow. I say this all the time. You have a breathing pattern for anxiety. You have a breathing pattern for depression, for stress, for grief. And if you can change your breath when you're feeling that grief or that anxiety, you can actually shift out of that emotion. Change your breath change the emotion, change your life. Mm -hmm. And I'm a very visual person. So for breath work for me, it works to visualize. I remember what happened when I first did your class, I had had a miscarriage a few months before. And by visualizing, bringing up the breath from like that womb space, Mm. I was able to kind of bring some of the trauma of that up and out. Um, so that's what it did for me, because a lot of women store their trauma in their womb space and their sacral chakra around there, whether or not they had a traumatic experience in that area. It's just where women naturally hold a lot of our emotions and our trauma. So to imagine like that breath really starting from there, rather than just starting up here and out the shallow breath you were talking about, um, helps you release it and let it out. hundred percent. Yeah, and a lot of people, you know, have back pain, right? Or neck pain or some, or their hips are tight or whatever. And that's, they're storing their stress. They're storing yeah. their whatever in their back. And I hear people all the time in my classes, like, oh my God, my back pain's gone. You know, it's literally, it's gone. I'm like, well, yeah, because you are storing it in your body. We store these things in our body. I tell people all the time, you know, if you don't think stress can affect your health, your physical health and go find my eyebrows because I lost them with (laughs) alopecia, right? That's a, that's a thing that's brought on by stress, by Mm -hmm. an emotional anxiety or trauma, whatever. Everybody knows that stress can cause heart attacks and cancer and all these different things. So if that's true, why isn't the inverse true? Why, why can't we clear that out of ourselves and heal our body? Of course we can. 
Absolutely. But we need, we need the tools to do it. All of these modalities that we talk about, these tools that we talk about from everything. And again, I say this almost on every episode between balance and mind, body, soul, you have to do it all. So we're not saying breath work alone is going to cure everything. If you're doing breath work and bringing up these emotions, you're probably going to want to talk about what came up in that breath work session with your EMDR therapist or your therapist. And guess what? Then you're probably going to want to go to your body worker to follow up and make sure that whatever was loosened up is now fully released out of your fascia and everything else. So it's just so important because breath is life. It's our life force where it all starts. So if you're starting on your healing journey, I think breath work is a perfect place to begin because that will start to shake up and bring up everything that you've been on lockdown with. I love that you brought up having someone to process with, you know, a therapist, whether it's EMDR or somebody that you can process with. Because um, a lot of therapists are sending their people to me now because they're like, I want them to to bring all this stuff up, to clear all this stuff out and then come process it with me. And so it's just tons and tons of therapists are coming to my trainings and and sending their people. It's, It's amazing. And yes, you need lots of different things. I was a trainer for years, personal trainer, and it was all about the outsides. And then I became all about the insides, right? And so- there's all of it. There's the mind, body, spirit or mind, body, soul. You got to work it all. And so I have learned that I have to have an open mind. Breath work cracked me open in a way that I had no idea was even available to me. And then I went down a rabbit hole of like, what else is out there? What else is available to me? Because all it takes is that one thing to completely readjust your brain and go like, wait, I've been breathing my whole life. And if I breathe in this way, I can feel this and clear this and do this with myself. And it's amazing. Like what else is available to me that I had no idea was there. And so you have to be willing to have an open mind and try something different. And and that's the first step, I think. What I love about you is your approach to it. And a lot of our listeners are from the East Coast. And I know you're a West Coast guy now. (laughs) (laughs) But um you know, your approach is kind of like no bullshit. Like this is, this is, this is what we're doing. You, you incorporate a little swearing here and there, which makes me feel comfortable and right at home. Um, I try but- not to incorporate it. It's just, it's in my tissues. <laughs> Dina. I'm like, I've got little kids and I'm trying not to swear. And I, but what happens in my classes is I get really emotional. I get into it. I have an experience teaching. You've heard me, you know, you've heard me get emotional. I'm like, I'm still this tough Boston guy guy who will choke you out if you go, if you take me there, which is pretty hard to take me there. Um, But like now I'm this guy who can access my feelings. Well, they've always been there. Let me, let me be honest. I've always been really sensitive and it was really tough growing up in the East coast being a sensitive guy. And I had to kind of push that down, do a shot and punch somebody in the face to make that sensitivity go away. But now I've just learned that I'm okay with my vulnerability and your greatest wound can become your greatest strength. So I was embarrassed. I always tried to get rid of my vulnerability, my sensitivity, and now I use it in my classes. And so I get vulnerable in my classes and people hear it coming through my voice and that allows them, that gives them permission to get vulnerable in my classes as well. Yeah. So So you, you do great for, I mean, Dave absolutely loves you and, you were kind of the catalyst to get him into all of this work too, because you showed him that, you know, a tough guy can, can tap into their emotions as well. And, and since then it's been a really interesting process to watch him like dive into all the other things that I make him do. (laughs) I I love that because, you know, I have, you know, so many women, mostly women come to my classes It's probably 60, 70% women. And then they come up to me afterwards and they go, my boyfriend and my husband would never do this, but they'll do this with you because you're a guy guy. And then the next class, I see the boyfriend or the husband sitting there like, can't believe she dragged me to this shit. But this ball guy (laughs) looked like he got fired from the blue man group. And then then afterwards that I'm like, that's my guy. I'm going to crack that dude open. I'm going to make that dude cry. I'm going to, he's, I'm going to change his life tonight. And he comes up usually almost always the Mm -hmm. guy will come up to me after the class and be like, Hey man, um, can I give you a hug? And and I can tell he doesn't ever hug another guy. And I say, sure. And he starts to like get emotional on me. He's like, I didn't think there was anything here. And that was incredible. And you know, they start telling me about their experience and I'm like, yeah, this is why I do this. This is why I do this work. Like this is why I'm here. Thank you. Because I remember, like I said, laying there after, and I went alone to the first class. It was one of the, when you were still in LA 
And I remember laying there just for a few minutes, kind of stunned because I have to be honest, um, coming from a dad who was quite bold, let's say is a good word for him. At first, when you were very strong with your approach, it, it scared me a little bit, but mm -hmm. then I realized that's what I needed. I needed a different experience with someone who's a little bit more, and I won't say aggressive, that's not the right word, but- um, <laughs> You could say it won't hurt my feelings. <laughs> no, I'm intense. Your, your approach is a little bit stronger than a lot yeah. of breath work that we see out there. Yeah. But in a way I needed it because I needed something to be aggressive in that way, but with to end with a soft ending. Yeah, well, I was a personal trainer when I found breath work and I, and I, when I was laying there doing it, I was like, God, I really need somebody to push me here. Cause the beginning part is really hard. Your brain doesn't want you to do it. Your brain doesn't ever want you to move out of your comfort zone. My brain just wants me to lay in bed and watch Netflix and eat ice cream. That's all it wants me to do. And I have to override that to go exercise, to go do whatever, to do breath work. And there's this incredible thing. It's a scientific thing that can happen. It's called transient hypofrontality. Part of the frontal lobe, the prefrontal mm -hmm. cortex of your brain can kind of turn off in this beautiful way but your brain doesn't want you to turn it off. It's where the ego lives, where the critic lives that tells you you're not enough. I'm not thin enough. I'm not rich enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not hairy enough. In some way, I'm not enough, right? And the first time I ever felt like I was enough was the first time I did breath work. And, but the brain doesn't want us to shut it off. So it fights us. It goes, no, this is weird. I don't like the teacher. I don't like the music. I don't like this person beside me breathing like Darth Vader. It gives us all these little stories to fight us so that we don't do it. And I needed someone to go, come on, you've done harder shit in your life than lay on the floor and breathe. Come on, John Paul, you can do this. You can, this isn't hard. Stop, stop chickening out stuff, you know, show up when you do what you don't feel like doing. That's when you become the best version of yourself, right? Yeah. When I do what I want to do all the time, nothing changes. But when I do what's hard, life becomes easy. And it's not that hard, I'm just breathing. So I decided to make a class that was different from any other breathwork teacher I'd ever seen, which was coaching in the beginning, like a personal trainer, pushing people in the beginning. And then what happened was I started seeing people crack open around the room and I started cracking open myself. And so I started saying emotional stuff in the second half of the class, right? Everybody wants somebody to show up and love them for who they are the way they are, but we don't love ourselves for who we are, the way we are. You teach people how to love you. You show people how to love you by how you love yourself. Mm -hmm. And how you love yourself is how you show up for yourself and do the hard work. The truth of the matter is that people don't want to hear is that the only reason we ever let anyone treat us poorly is because we feel like we deserve it on some level. And when you start doing this work, when you start showing up for yourself in this way, you, you stop letting people treat you poorly because you know, like I'm worth more. I'm not going to put up with this shit. And so I see a lot of relationships end or the other person has to show up in a different way because it shifts yeah. the relationship. So listen, the longest, most important relationship you're ever going to have is the one with yourself. So yeah. work on that one. And, and that's what breathwork does. It's really the relationship to yourself and your breath in an incredible way. Well, you're so gifted in in this field and we and many Thank others you. i'm sure um <laughs> and i appreciate you personal like i said on a personal level because you really did crack dave open and let him see that there um there's room for men in the space of vulnerability and growth and self-reflection um and i think there's there's so many people out there right now we're in a time that everyone is acknowledging their pain and their hurt and they're looking for outlets and modalities and everyone is going to resonate with something different. So what Dina does, we try to bring a little bit of everything. So when I thought breath work, diving into it, you are the man to do this. So let, let us know how can we, if we're not so lucky to be in person, how can we get to your breath work? Sure. Where can we find you? I have a website, breathewithjp.com, uh, B-R-E-A-T-H-E, -E, don't forget the E, with forget JP. E. Yeah, people forget they do breath with JP. <laughs> Breathewithjp.com, that's kind of my main website. And then I have another one with all my, I have online courses. So if you're somewhere and you can't come in person, I have all these courses online. I do a class every Sunday on Zoom. And there's a 72 hour replay for that class. So a lot of people in different time zones are like, oh, I can't make the 9 a.m. Pacific time. They do the replay and it's, the replay is amazing. And then I teach other people how to, teach this, how to lead other people. So if you have a coaching practice or you're a yoga teacher, or you're looking for a new career that's fulfilling, right? That feels amazing. I, I love getting these emails from my students who are like, oh my God, I took someone through a breathwork session, or I took someone through a class and I watched the change in this person. And it, it's so fulfilling. 
That's the I know key. a lot of people who took your training, teacher yeah. training, and they're amazing teachers. Thank amazing you. Amazing teachers. Thank you. So I do teacher trainings in person and online. So I have a teacher training coming up in Denver in July in person. And those have sold out for the last seven years, which is amazing. I have a few spots left in that. And then I have the teacher trainings online as well. So that's all on my website, Breathe with JP. And uh, we'll try and we'll put together a code for your listeners if they want to try the Zoom class for 10 bucks off the Zoom class. Everybody likes a deal. But I've learned if you don't pay something, you won't show up and do the work, right? No, it's like, absolutely. If I don't pay, I don't pay attention. No, and you, there has to be an exchange. I don't put a lot of people, you know, because I have a following like to give me free shit. I'm like, there has to be an exchange. I have to give you something either we're going to really post about it or I have to give you some money or both because I believe in that. And like you said, so, if you don't pay, you don't pay attention. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If I don't pay, I don't pay attention. I've gone to but my- We love a discount. <laughs> yeah, but I love a deal too, right? If I go to my students' class, they're like, oh, you don't have to pay. I'm like, I have to pay. I'm not going to breathe if I don't pay. I need yeah. to be invested in this, right? And yeah. so there needs to be an exchange too. Like you're working here, right? Yeah. And so pay people for their stuff. Yeah, I, I agree. But we we love a discount. Right, I love Maya? a deal too. <laughs> <laughs> well, JP, thank you so much for taking the time. I know you're busy. You're headed to LA soon. Yeah, I'm headed to um, LA tomorrow. I have a class in LA tomorrow and then- you know, all the fun Amazing. stuff, all the things, interview with LA Times, and it's exciting. Well, you know, no big deal. No big deal. <laughs> well, now you'll be on Dina Does Too, and thank you so much so for excited. taking the time. I really appreciate it. And everyone, go breathe. <laughs>